So you want to create this particular crescent moon in Blender. Let's see how you can do the same really easily in a few steps. We're going to start off by deleting the default cube by tapping X and hitting delete. We're then going to hit seven on the numpad to go into the top view, or you can always hit view, viewpoint, top in case you don't have a numpad. Then hit shift A, mesh, circle. And right now the circle is pretty jagged. So in order to increase it from the bottom menu over here, you can increase the vertices to something really large. We're just going to multiply 32 by 4 to get 128 to make it very smooth. Then we're going to hit tab to go into edit mode. Or in case tab doesn't work for you, you can switch to edit mode and object mode by hitting this button over here. So once we're in edit mode, we're going to double tap A to deselect everything and hit B for box select and select the number of vertices that you feel appropriate for your requirements and select them and hit X, delete vertices. Once you have them deleted, we can hit tab to go back into object mode, tap object and change convert to curve. So now we've converted it into a curve. We will get something called the object data properties over here. And then you can go ahead, scroll down to geometry and then increase the bevel depth to something like 0 0.2. And also the resolution, you can increase it to 32, which is the max that they allow for me at least. Now you can hit tab to go into edit mode again, select just these two edge vertices. Make sure you have this selected to individual origins and make sure that you have this button enabled for proportional editing. In case you don't want to use the button, you can always tap O to toggle proportional editing on and off. Then hit Alt S to scale it down, tap zero, and just use your middle mouse button to scroll up and down to increase how much of the moon you want affected. So in my case, I think this looks about good for my moon. So I'm going to hit tab to go back and there you have your crescent shape for the moon. The next step is going to be the texturing. So in order to do that, we're going to bring our cursor to the joint of these two windows, click and drag to the left, and then we're going to change the editor type to the shader editor. We're going to hit N to remove this. And then we're going to change to the material properties over here and click new to create a new material. To actually see the changes in the material, we're going to switch from the solid viewport shading to the rendered viewport shading. And before we actually start adding any materials, we're going to go to the world properties over here and change the color all the way to black. Similarly, our light source is currently placed somewhere. So we're going to select the light over here, hit Alt G to clear location and then just grab it on the x-axis to move it to the side and then grab it on the z-axis to move it up. Somewhere about there looks fine. We'll also go to the light properties over here and increase the power to something like 2000. So now that we have all of that set up, let's go ahead and start the texturing for this object. Before texturing as well, we also have to make sure that it's set to shade smooth. So we can again go to object and click on shade smooth. So how we're going to texture the moon is we're going to keep adding different Voronoi textures or noise textures and add them up to each other to create various levels of detail. You can choose to add as many or as few as you like. So we're going to start off by hitting shift A and search for the Voronoi texture. We can go ahead and add in a texture coordinate node and also a mapping node and plug the object into the vector and the vector into the vector. Alternatively, if you have the node wrangler switched on, you can just hit control T with the Voronoi texture selected to get the mapping and texture nodes automatically come up connected. Then we're going to select everything, shift it to the side and add in a color ramp node. So shift A, search color ramp and place that in here. Now we're going to take the distance, place that into the factor and we're going to click color and put that into the base color. Now we're going to play with the slider. So we're going to slide it in and slide this in as well. And then change the scale to something really low because this is our base level. So we're going to have something like three over here. We're going to change the color of the black to something like a dark gray. And we're going to change this white to something slightly lighter than the dark gray that we just created. So something like this, no, not too much of a visible pattern. Then we're going to increase the roughness all the way to one and decrease the specular all the way down to zero. We can go ahead and just put, bring this in a little bit more and clearly it's too visible. So we're going to 
take this and just increase it till it is barely noticeable. So that's our first layer of bottom eye textures. The next layers will be adding in to the normal to create actual bump so that it seems like there's a lot more geometry. So we're going to take this Voronoi node and shift D, place it down here, take the vector from here and plug it in right there. Then take another color ramp node and just connect the distance to the factor. And then we're going to search for a bump node and place that right here, place the color into the height. And then we're going to increase this scale to something large. Let's start off with 20 and of course take the color ramp and bring them in. And then finally, we're going to decrease the strength to something low like 0.2 and connect the normal of the bump to the normal of the principal BSDF. So once you have that set, you'll be able to see what it actually looks like. And then you can make changes accordingly. I think that it's still way too large. So I'm going to change the scale to something like 40. That looks much better. Now, along with this, I also want there to be another layer or another level of detail. So we're going to add in noise to that. So let's select all of these nodes, shift them to the side, take our Voronoi and color ramp, shift D, bring them down. And we're going to switch the Voronoi texture for a color ramp. So shift S to switch and texture, noise texture. You can always delete the Voronoi texture, shift A, search for color noise texture and plug that in. We're going to increase this scale to something really large, like 200 maybe. And then we're going to have to add these two together. So in order to add them, we're going to have to search for a mix RGB, place that in, change the type from mix to add and increase the factor all the way to one and plug the color into color two. So now you can see how there's also noise added in to the initial Voronoi. You can change the scale to see the effect of the noise. So now maybe we can decrease the Voronoi by a little bit. So let's make this 30 just to make it a little more prominent. So once we have that, we can always add in the original Voronoi texture that we had into the bump map as well. So let's do that by taking these, duplicating this color ramp, changing the colors from the two grays that we have to black and white, and then taking the distance, plugging that in here, duplicating the add texture, placing it in over here, and taking this color, plugging that in over there. So that just gives it a little bit more of a bump. So we can go ahead and actually decrease the contrast over here as well. So now you can switch off the overlays to see what it currently looks like. I think that this is still a bit too prominent. And there we have our moon. So now in order to get a few more effects in case you want it, you can go ahead and add in a background with a few stars. We're going to hit shift A to add in a mesh and we're going to add in two things. We're going to add in a circle, which is going to actually mask out our moon because generally nothing behind the moon in the radius of the moon will be seen because even though it looks like it's not there, the moon is there. It's just, it just has no light to reflect. So we have our circle. We're just going to shift that back. So just G Z and just shift it back by maybe 0.2 tab and hit F to create a face. We're going to give it a new material. We're going to change the base color to black and we're going to reduce specular and increase roughness. So that is now going to mask out anything just behind the disk of the moon. Then we're going to hit shift A to add in a new plane. And this is where we're going to add in our stars. So we're going to place that back and then we're just going to scale that up. So in order to see this right now, we're in the orthographic view. So the distance isn't affecting anything. So we don't want that. We want to see it in the perspective view. You can either hit five to go into perspective view or what you could do is you can hit Control alt zero to snap the camera to your view so once you have your camera in our view we can select the camera and just centralize it or change it accordingly so we're going to grab it on the z-axis to move it back a bit then grab it on the y-axis just to centralize our moon and that looks fine then we can also go to the viewport display and change the passport out all the way to one so that we see nothing outside the camera view Take this plane, scale it up so that it's covering everything. And now let's give it our material. So we're going to hit new, change the base color to black for now, and also go all the way to the settings, blend mode, and make it alpha clip. So in our shader editor, find the nodes. In case you can't find it, you can always click view frame all, and it'll immediately bring it back to where to wherever your nodes are. And now we're going to search for a Voronoi texture. We're going to change from Euclidean to Minkowski, and then we're going to search for a color ramp. We're going to 
take the distance, place that in there, and take this color and place it into the alpha for now. And clearly you can see that the stars are currently black, which means they're completely see-through. So we don't want that. So we're going to flip the color ramp. We're going to also take this color and place it into the emission. Okay, our circle needs to be increased in size a bit. There we go. Now let's switch off overlays and let's take our plane and just mess around with these options. So our exponent, I'll decrease it to something like 0 0.3. And then I'm just going to decrease the scale. So since this seems too small, I think the plane is just too far back. So let's grab the plane up on the z-axis. We can move it even higher, go back to zero, and now just increase the scale till we get our stars. And there we go. Now we can increase the emission strength to something really high like 10, come to our up properties and check bloom. So if you want our moon to also be a little bit more emissive, what you can do is take this lamp, shift D, just bring it closer, G, Z, and just bring it down to about there. And now you'll see how emissive it gets. So now just GX, and just move it to whatever distance you like to get how much ever emission or emissivity you generally prefer for your project. So right now I think GX, this seems about perfect. This is what I want. I can just GZ this as well. So I think I like this. It's a lot of detail. It's a perfect crescent moon and you've just created this yourself on Blender. If you have any other questions, queries, suggestions, or things that you want to create, leave it down in the comment section below and we'll create tutorials for the same. I will answer whatever questions you have as well. And until next time, stay creative.